Hello, Dr. Randy Roberts here with the Utah Smile Clinic, creator of the 3-on-6 procedure. Um, so we are getting a lot of reviews from a Texas in, from a dentist at the North Texas Dental Surgery um, office. And he says he's 3-on-6 or all-on-4 debunking myths and setting the record straight. Um, I haven't watched this video yet, but um, we're getting a lot of reviews from this guy like every week, something like that. And I think it's interesting that he's doing these, uh, these reviews and things without um, actually knowing what a three on six is. I feel like if I was going to review Tesla, I would have driven one, not just kind of had my perception, what I think. Uh, Tesla is like, well, I think I know what electric cars are, you know, so here's what I think the advantages of gas cars versus electric cars are. And, you know, just kind of like a generalized thing when you've never, never actually been in one or owned a Tesla, um, which, <clears throat> you know, I don't think you have to have had a three on six, but as a doctor, you should have at least, you know, understand the science or have spoken with one of us if you're going to be doing a bunch of reviews so that we could answer your questions because a lot of the, the a lot of the things that he's saying about the three on six are just not true and it's understandable because you know as a smart person you would think that you would understand the difference between an electric car and a, and a gas car but what Elon Musk has been able, been able to do with Tesla is you know unprecedented electric cars really weren't anything like what they are today um, and the three on six is similar like we what we have been able to develop isn't really like anything else. It's like, I can understand your perspective. Other doctors are like, no, but yeah, you're worried because what if the bone falls away in the future? And it's like, yeah, that, that would be a concern with the way that people did things in the past. But the way that we do it now, we're able to make sure that you have strong bone forever. And we're able to develop the tissue. So even if you're missing bone, we're able to bone and tissue graft that in a way that's predictably that will look really good. And so there's just a lot of things that are misconceptions that they don't understand about what we do because they don't know what we do. So it would make sense that their, that their reviews would be flawed. But, it's, but to me, it's like if I was going to go and I was going to review another doctor somewhere and I'd never spoken to the doctor, I didn't even know what he did, it seems like that would be a hard, uh, it'd be hard, like especially if you're going to review it over and over again without really knowing what it is. It's like, you should probably uh, have a conversation with me at some point. So anyways, I'm gonna review the video and I'll, I'll go over some of those things. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to respond to a comment I received from a representative of the Smile Clinic of Utah about the differences between the three on six and the all on four implant system. It was a thoughtful comment and I really appreciate the willingness to engage in conversation, but there are a few things I need to address. So let's dive in. Here's a comment I received. For brevity's sake, I won't read it, but I'll go over it with my responses. Please pause the video if you'd like to read it. However, it mentions that most of the information I provided about 3on6 is inaccurate and invites me to visit their clinic to observe a surgery. I truly appreciate this invitation, but I'd like to clarify a few points based on both my 14 years of experience as a board certified periodontist and three years of periodontics residency training, as well as my broader research on these implant systems. In addition, before I get into the meat and bones of this video, I'd like to also address that I've spoken to multiple other specialists ranging from periodontist to prosthodontist with years of experience and training on both FP1, three on six, and FP3, all on four. And I asked them about their thoughts on exactly this topic. And they all agree that patient candidacy and expectations should be limited with a three on six FP1 type of solution. And although many people could technically be a three on six FP1 patient, long-term aesthetic results and implant health are much more predictable on an all-on-4 FP3 type of solution. Now, this is a very important point. What I mean by aesthetics is that if people are willing to deal... Like I said, his first point is it's long-term uh, aesthetics are more predictable with, uh, with an all-on-4. So what he's talking about there is that like with your natural gum tissue, what if you, what if it recedes a little bit, you know? And that's a problem that people have with natural teeth. You know, if you have natural teeth, um, you have that, you, you potentially could lose a little bit of bone and you could potentially lose a little bit of gum tissue if you don't take care of your bone and if you don't take care of your gums. And that's true with the three on six too. You potentially could lose a little bit of bone and you could potentially lose a, bit, a little bit of gum tissue. Whereas if you have a denture, what it all, that's what essentially an all on four is. You have a denture, it's like your gum tissue is fake. So you don't have to worry about that. You know, it's like, yay but you do still have to worry about losing all of the bone up above there. And it's more likely to fail and have problems in the future. 
But as far as the long-term stability of the restoration, is that which, which are you more concerned about? Your gum that you may or may not be able to see at all? Or that the whole thing fails because you can't keep the thing clean? So, and also we have really predictable ways to make sure that the, the restoration can last predictably a very long time. If you brush and floss and if you take um, the algae calcium like we supply, and if, uh, and if you're following the right protocols, then you should be able to have a, a restoration that takes a long time. So it's like, yeah, you're asking um, board certified prosthodontists and periodontists that have probably not done anywhere near the amount of FP1 restorations that I have done or that the other three on six providers have done because that's one of the things that, we've, that we specialize in. That's, we've, we're doing thousands of these restorations now and we know how to get beautiful, predictable results. And it's just not something that anybody else does. If you're going to these prosthodontists, like I, I've, I've spoken to tons of prosthodontists who've, who don't ever do FP1 restorations. Periodontist as well, like he's a periodontist and he almost never does them because he, like he says, can't get predictable, good results that will last a long time. So yeah, I can understand why you'd be in your hands. It's a little bit more scary because um, cause of the things, but yeah, let's continue. With longer teeth and more squarish teeth and long-term papilla loss, then FP1 three on six will be an option for more patients. However, if a patient cares about the aesthetics of their teeth, then these discussions and expectations must be discussed. Also a disclaimer, please understand that this is not any sort of attack on Dr. Roberts. I'm sure he's a great guy, but as you stated in your comment, my intention is truly to just get information out there to help others. Also, unlike Dr. Roberts, who has ownership of the branded three on six protocol, I have no ownership or vested interest in all on four because FP3 and FP1 are just implant treatment protocols. They've been around for decades. Finally, I do both FP1 and FP3 in my practice. In fact, I did an FP1 two weeks ago and have another one coming up shortly. So I'm not only eager to do FP3 all on four in my practice, nor do I refuse to do FP1. If any of my viewers seem to get lost with any of the terminology of principles throughout this video, please refer to the video description below as I will have important links to other important videos I made about this very topic. First of all, I'd like to address the statement you made and I'll list it below. But the basic gist of it was that you were saying that cross arch stabilization causes less stress to be on the bone and on the implants and therefore makes the bone stronger. This statement defies everything I've learned in implant dentistry. The goal is to reduce the stress on the implants throughout the healing period and over the long term. In my 14 years, the most common reason for implant failure is excessive load, whether due to improper implant sizing or improper prosthetic design. No offense, but this statement is the complete opposite of what we try to achieve in implants. So he's saying that with the implants, you want to have the least amount of load on an implant. And um, I agree with him at the beginning, when you first place your implants, it's important to have a minimal amount of load on those, which is why we won't um, put a lot of, uh, why, we don't, why, we separate, why we don't separate it up into bridges until after a few months, um, because then you want to stimulate that bone growth. Yeah, so you don't want to have too much stimulation on those implants initially. But similar to like an arm, if you put it in a cast forever, your bone and your, your bone and your muscles are going to atrophy. So you put an arm in a cast while it heals. You let it heal for a few months and then you take the cast off and then your bone can get stronger and stronger. It's the same with your implants. You put your prosthetic into one long piece so that the implants have less stress for the first few months and then you break it up into bridges so that they can have more stress and that stimulates some more bone growth. So you're saying that um, tying all the implants together forever is the best solution? Like that goes against science. It goes against how we, how we take care of our bones. It goes against how we take care of everything else in every other industry. Dentistry is not all of a sudden, oh yeah, well we wanna tie everything together forever so that it's strong forever. It's like, no, breaking it up into bridges or even into individual teeth, that makes it so that each bone and each tooth, why, are, why were our teeth individual to start with? Why did we have individual teeth? Why didn't God just set it up with one big old long tooth? It's like, Putting individual teeth helps us to stimulate bone growth and it helps us each tooth to be stronger and stronger. So yeah, making it into bridges makes it so that, so that you have more stimulation of each one of the, of the bone around those implants. Plant dentistry. Second, it was mentioned that about 90% of all on four candidates could and should have received three on six instead. That's quite a bold statement. In reality, three on six requires more bone than all on four, which limits its applicability. Many patients, especially those who've suffered bone loss, both the valuable buccal bone and the interproximal bone, simply don't have the bone structure for predictable long-term implant health and a Yeah, so, and that, I get it, like, 
people that don't know how predictably you can bone graft and tissue graft these days, like that would, that would make sense. Like, yeah, no, there's, most people don't have enough bone. It's like actually most people do have enough bone, especially if you know how to bone graft and tissue graft really well. And uh, so we're able to predictably get long-term beautiful results on our patients because we know how to, know how to build it up where, they, where it's been lost. And most people haven't lost all that much bone. It's maybe been like a millimeter or two. And getting a millimeter of, two of bone, and that's not even like vertical bone loss, that's horizontal bone loss. Normally if you pull a tooth, it's like the front part of your bone will lose a little bit and it's easy to build that back up again. Um, if, the, if the doctor pulled your tooth out and broke some of your bone, if he's able to maintain that and he bone, bone grafted it, then there's a good chance you didn't lose very much at all. Um, so anyways, we're able to build that up and get beautiful results. Aesthetics. Yes, grafting can help, but that adds complexity, time, and cost, which isn't ideal for everyone. Also, I'd like to apologize about not knowing whether nowadays 3-on-6 was still segmenting their bridges or doing a single unit design. I personally, as well as others, are in favor of the single arch design as it allows for cross-arch stabilization and therefore less stress, less bone loss, and less implant failure with a single unit design. Now, hygiene is another point that they brought up. While it's true... So, he says... Uh... Less bone loss. Actually, you get more bone loss if you keep it all seg all together in one long prosthetic, which is why we only have it in that long prosthetic for three months. Because the longer you leave it in one long prosthetic, the more bone loss you're going to find over time. The quicker you can break that up after it's integrated, the more you can stimulate that bone to continue to grow and have less bone loss and have more bone that gets built up. True that food can trap under an all-on-4 prosthesis with proper prosthesis, meaning teeth, design along with proper hygiene practices like regular cleanings and the right tools, these issues can be prevented. As for the papilla and gum aesthetics, maintaining natural gums around a three on six isn't as simple as it sounds, especially for patients with bone or tissue loss. While bone and tissue grafting can help, it doesn't always guarantee perfect results. And some patients may still experience gum recession or visible implants over time. Also, please evaluate this example of an FP1 solution that an Italian world famous prosthodontist posted on his Instagram. You can see in the seven year long term photo the interproximal bone resorption and gum loss that occurred between the teeth despite the soft tissue sculpting that was done. If the papilla is not supported by interproximal bone, you get this type of gum loss, which results in horrible food traps. I couldn't imagine. So one of the ways that we're able to help maintain the, the bone and the gum tissue, the papillas around those restorations is by placing cow bone. So cow bone, one of the advantages of that is that it is a much more dense bone. So it, it holds its place there for much, much longer. It's a, it, will, it will stay there for many, many years. And also if the patient is um, taking a good source of calcium so they're not going to be losing their bone levels, then... Um, then yes, it can help maintain that bone forever. But, but at the same time, you, you're looking at this picture of an FP1 restoration um, from six years later. That was one with, it wasn't segmented. It was one solid one. So yeah, you're likely to lose more bone. Proving my point. Break it up into bridges, you're more likely to have more of that bone stabilization over time. If you were to show an all on four of a, sim a similar case that over the course of six years, you're gonna also see that amount of bone loss. But the gum tissue is still gonna look great because it's fake gum tissue. It's a, it's a it's a denture like a denture material with fake gums. It's like, yeah, but then you look below the denture and now there's a big old space there where it was much more difficult to clean. So you're more likely to have food and things like that and uh, an implant failure because of that. Which results in horrible food traps. I couldn't imagine eating anything and always dealing with things getting caught in these spaces nonstop. And there was also a claim that all on four is 13 times more likely to break compared to three on six. This is an extraordinary claim, and while I'd love to see the independent studies backing it up, the research I'm familiar with, along with all the, the all-on-4 FP3 and FP1 cases that we do here at this practice, does not support this. And again, I've asked other friends and family about this. Both systems, when executed well... Again, um, so we're, we're Tesla, and you've never driven a Tesla, and you don't know what it is. You're saying, I can't believe that it could support that, because like... You're, you're talking about one restoration that is an FP, uh, uh, an FP1 restoration that's all the way around. Like, yeah, that's way more likely to fracture because it's so narrow. But you break that up into three bridges compared to something bigger. It's like um, uh, Thomas Linkovicus did a study where he did full arch restorations versus uh, four unit bridges versus single unit bridges. And the likelihood of a full arch bridge breaking is 
it was, like I said, 14 times more likely to break just because it's, because it's so big like that, which is why you have to continue to cut away more and more bone to make it thicker and thicker and bigger and bigger of a restoration so that it's less likely to fracture. So like, well, the solution to not have your restorations fracture is to cut away more bone. So they're just constantly chopping away more and more bone to make the restoration so big that it won't break. And so that's gonna make it more difficult to talk and it's gonna make it more difficult to clean and it's gonna make it so that you're chopping away, chopping away your bone so that in the future you have less bone. So if you do have a problem um, you have, and you have implants that fail, there's less areas to, to place any implants and you're more likely to have to get zygomatic implants or something more extreme like that instead of building up and conserving your bone. They'll offer strong, long-lasting results for patients. But the simpler design of the All On 4 actually makes it easier and less costly to manage in the long run. Also, as long as a patient is under warranty, why would this matter? This also stresses why it's important for a patient to see a provider who properly warranties his product. In the end, both 3-on-6 and All-On-4 are viable solutions, but they're not one size fits all. While the 3-on-6 might work well for certain patients, the All-On-4 has been proven time and time again to be a reliable, cost-effective solution for a wide variety of cases, especially for those with bone loss. Thanks again to Mike at the Smile Clinic for making the invitation. I think it's important that we continue having these conversations to provide the best care for our patients. If you're considering dental implants, make sure you consult with a trusted professional who takes your... Yeah, you're welcome. Happy to have conversations with you. But like I said, like I feel like having a conversation about this and being able to answer your questions um, uh, lifetime so we could tell you all the things that we've learned over the course of 10 years of doing these things as opposed to just talking to somebody else who's been some doing it differently. Like, yeah, they're gonna have different, different results. Like, yeah, well, we did a FP1 restoration that was one solid bridge and look how much bone we lost. Like, yeah, you did it wrong. There's a, there's a million different things that you have to do correctly, which we have spelled out now, which is why we have a training program where we will license doctors to become three on six providers. And we don't let other people try to do this because you have to know how to do all of those steps in order to be certified that you're able to, be, to give someone a three on six. We want everybody, if they're going to any doctor in the country, if they're going to someone that is a three on six certified provider, they're going to get the same steps and they're going to know how to make sure that they're going to have beautiful, long lasting restorations um, where they're not going to be losing as much bone. So um, anyways, it's good to have these conversations. I'm, I appreciate the, the tone of respect in his videos and talking to us and saying, you know, like, but yeah, it, there's, there's just things you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And there's a lot of things that the industry currently doesn't know about what the three on six is, and it's going to change the industry. Right now, people are getting bone chopped away because that's what's been predictable. And um, now we've got a new way that's, that's more predictable and it's stronger and it's better, and it works in 90 plus percent of the, percent of the patients. Yeah, is there still cases where I'll do all on four, all on X? Yeah, there are. It's just a, a much smaller number than what the industry thinks. Like I'm maybe doing it on, uh, two or three percent of my patients and the rest of them I'm able to build up and get them a, a beautiful FP1 three on six restoration. Anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any more questions.